Hey guys, today we're going to do a quick dive into the discipline of character design. This video is composed of 8 chapters on the subject. So take your time to watch and re-watch it as many times as you need to understand the concepts presented here. I decided to make this video in English since I noticed that great part of my audience is from USA, India, UK and Australia. So I might make more videos like this in the future depending on the feedback on this one. Anyway, let's talk about our main subject. So what is character design in the first place? I'm glad you asked. Well, in my opinion, character design is one of the main disciplines of concept. Followed by environment design, prop design, so the term is composed of two words, character, as we call the persona, and the word design, a term that came from the Italian designio, that means drawing, project, or study. In other words, what character design means is a study on a persona not only in visual terms, but also on the conceptual term. So now let's make a quick recap on some design principles that will dictate the visuals we are going to create. Keep in mind that these principles can be applied to any visual form. Not only characters, but scenarios and props. So what is shape and form and why it's important? Shape is what defines the format of the elements we see on an image, but form is what defines the mass and volume of the subject. Here is an example. Shapes dictates a lot of the perception of the subject. Just take the basic shapes, square, circle and triangle. Each one of these can emphasize certain characteristics such as protection, boredom, anger, speed. There is a great list that we can apply to each of these shapes. And what about contrast? Well, contrast take part on this as the element that helps us to separate between light and dark, close and far, black and white values. This can be really tricky on the first place but, as you can see on this example, it's all about contrast when it came down to understand the shapes and the relation between them. And what about color? Well, every color has a value. But color it is also the main responsible for the mood. Even the absence of it can have an effect. Just look at these different color versions of the same image. Knowing how to combine colors and its properties such as saturation, hue and light is essential to create the correct mood. So we are going to make a realistic art. Our primary objective here is to depict reality. So let's talk about anatomy on a realistic character. The obvious answer on dealing with realism is to seek for anatomy references and on what looks right. But at the same time you should also think that you could break it into some manners to make it way more interesting. Here is an example. You don't have to always make everything on the human proportions, but you should understand where everything fits so you can make it look realistic. But we can talk about realism without mentioning textures. They play a huge part on bringing the visuals you want, even more than proportions in some cases. But one fundamental thing about it is to know how to manage texture under light and shadow. The right texture without the right 
rendering can look like a poorly college. So keep an eye on it. Rendering realistic is much more about understanding how light works in a more physically correct approach. So a good exercise is to use a 3D program like Blender or 3D Max in order to understand how light adjusts to each material. Ok, so now that we understand the design principles and the art style we are going to use, let's talk about a briefing for the character we are going to design. But what is a briefing? It's basically a documentation with the infos on the subject we are going to work on. In this case, it's the background of the character that must be created. So what are the main questions you have to ask yourself on this kind of briefing? It's simple. Let me make a list. Who? Who is your character? What he do for a living? How old is he? What is his gem? Where? Where your character is from? Where he is now? When? What year is he from? What historical period you could identify him? What? What he is doing on the scenes you are going to depict? Why? What is his purpose? Why he do that? How? How he is going to do it? What is his plan? All these questions will help us create a briefing on the character we are going to create. In this demonstration, I created a character for an art contest. So my briefing was filled like this. Who? A middle-aged undead war hero man. Where? He is from an European kind of place. He is rising from the graveyard as an undead. When? Probably a late Middle Ages period. What? He is rising from his grave as a curse to revenge from the ones that killed him and his army. Why? His purpose is to avenge his death and the fall of his kingdom. How? He's going to use his new necromantic powers to resurrect his army. So let's give a face to our character. A lot of times we might start doing the body silhouettes first. But in this case I decided that Giving it a face first would help me understand the mood of the character, since the body will follow normal human proportions. As we are doing a realist design, here we can use photos to speed up our process. A good place to get free and quick iterations is the Artgrid website. So for this design I made a few iterations using to get a base to start designing the faces. From there, I can use some photos to compose the rest of the look. As you can see, I'm using a skew to make the bone parts exposed. So this is my recommendation for you to make this part way quicker.
just get some profile photo iterations on Art Reader and then iterate over it using Photo Bash and painting till you get a good result. That way you can make one option in less than 30 minutes. This gives you way less stress when you need to generate a lot of options for your client. So you might ask, when it's time to stop? I usually try to integrate everything that I made over the head using photos or painting with a mixer brush. And mixer brush can be a great ally on making everything look on the same finishing. Now let's talk about the body structure. In a more realistic design of a character, we should follow the human proportions, and this may come as a shocker for you, but you can simplify this step by simply using a ready-made silhouette. In this case, I use the silhouette of a neoprene suit model, and start thinking about the clothing over it. This way, you can just focus on what really matters here. So for the clothing, I get a lot of reference from Pinterest, as well as from some museums archives to understand better what type of clothes our hero is going to use. The best way I found to do this is by making a simple line art over the shapes, just to understand where each part come in. And as you progress to as many iterations of loading you want, it's time to understand the contrast of your armor. So what I usually do in this case is to use the lasso tool and the paint bucket to fill the areas of the armor. 
That way, it's also easier to understand the silhouettes and forms that I create in each iteration. After this, I'm going to make a layer over it and paint the darker areas of the armor. That way, we can better understand the contrast of the character. At the end, you can even use a threshold filter on the face to make it match with the rest of the body. So you probably noticed that we made all these iterations pretty quick. But now you gotta decide which design you're going to improve for the model sheet. Most of the times, this job will be up to your art director or to your client. But in this case, you're doing this on your own. This is a good time to test all the possible options. In this case, I found out that the head number 3 just made a good match with the armor number 1. Now the first thing you should do is to understand how your turnaround will be. You can do a 360 on the character or you could just make a front and back view with some slight perspective so the 3D modeler can see the side. That's gonna be the case here. The next step is to draw this other side. So I made the same visual landmarks as the front side on the back side. Drawing with the same line art style to keep it coherent.
Next, I inserted the chosen hand on the front view and had to design the back view almost from scratch. This can be tricky sometimes if you're not used to draw and do photo bash at the same time. So you might need a 3D model to understand how to insert everything. In this case, the rotation of the head in this position can be really difficult to know how to do. As you can see, I go from drawing to painting to photo bash all over, all the time. And this is completely fine if you are understanding what we are doing. But if not, the best thing is to start with a painting maze and then proceed to photo bash over it. And then integ integrate it using painting again.
Now for the body, I make a similar process. First I make all the silhouette selection ready, so I can work on a layer, painting over it, without the worry of painting over the form, so I won't break the silhouette in this way. Now this may sound a bit tricky, but you should try to paint under your line art till you feel secure to remove it. And just use the paint layer for now on. Yes, I know, line art can hold a lot of things, but keep in mind that if you made a solid base and painted it following the form structures, it will be alright. I start painting a few photo bears and then proceed to paint with a round brush, using a bit of opacity.
Now the next step, as you already have a painting base, is to think about the materials. I already mixed a few photo bashes before, on the leather parts and on the sword. But in these cases I thought it would be way more interesting to do this in the first place than to have to paint over it. As for me, this was way clear that this kind of textures would work out. You're going to notice that the following process is similar to what I did before with the head. So we are going to work over a base and add photo textures and then proceed to paint over it again to integrate on the same light. In this step, it's really important to get a reference for the textures and light. In this case, the light was coming from the right to the left of my character. So everything should be consistent to this.
managing the color is another aspect that can be tricky in these cases. The best advice I can tell you is to use less saturation in case of DAO. And also, don't forget to check the contrast of the image putting the, the whole picture in black and white. Use a layer with color with just a few of black. This may come a bit difficult on the first times, but we will get the hang of it. As I said previously, every color has a value. As I get a little bit satisfied with the painting and textures, one common thing I usually do is a soft light layer over all the body, so I can manage better the light and shadow. Also a good thing to have is some adjustment layers all over it so you can control better the whole image. So you can use things like curves, selective color, hue saturation. Finally, I went back and made a few more interesting details to add more history to the character. I also made a shadow occlusion layer, so everything look a bit more 3D in general. This is a thing I learned from doing 3D work and understanding the image passes. This step can take some time, as you may need to use the lasso tool to select each area.
finally, I added some scratch and some other details so I could balance the amount of details versus the blank areas we got on the character. So guys, I hope this tutorial could give you a better understanding of my creative process and all the problems we have to face during these steps. Making characters can be really hard at times, but if you keep your fundamentals checked and give the right amount of time to think and work out the solutions, it won't be a big hustle. As always, I would like to thank you for your time. Don't forget to subscribe comment and please share this free tutorial with your friends. The more people I can help with this kind of content, the better. And if you want to see more of my work or just reach me out to talk, the links will be on the description of the video. Thank you again and take care.